All right, with the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Um, I would uh, like to ask the stand in vice chair to. Read the public statement information. The first public input session is a 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designed or designated for noble residents. The board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters involving personnel. Do we have any public input at this time? Yes. All right, I think we're, we're good. Oh, we do. Hi, Terry Wright, Berwick, Maine. I just want to remind everyone out there that on October 30th, Berwick is doing our Halloween trunk or treat and BCTV will again be opening our doors to put up our green screen and have kids come in to see how a public access station works, to stand before the screen talking to the audience outside, and uh, they'll be able to see themselves right away on our TV. Um, so please, if you get a chance to stop down on October 30th, it starts at 5 o'clock, I believe. We'd love to see you. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on to, well, first, any further? Looks like no. All right. Um, moving on, number four on the agenda, the minutes of September 5th. Any commentary? Any problems? I want to go over those twice. <laughs> Is the 5th or the 19th? I'm sorry. The, you know, the, you, that's you, a mistake you, between the agenda and the uh, we, we need to, we support need to material. The 19th, yeah, the agenda right? says the 5th, but the... Uh, the correct date is it's correct in the minutes the minutes are correct the agenda's got it. <laughs> i missed it too Jeez. anyway september 19th uh, any commentary on the minutes how's it look Jeez. I know. can't win all right uh do i have a motion to accept the minutes Second. I'll second. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's, that's oh, one. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item number five, the student report. So I went around and I talked to some people, and right now one of the big things that I'm focusing on is I know last meeting we talked a little bit about like a school store and what that might look like. So I sent out a form through our National Honor Society classroom. I have a list of some people who would be willing to like volunteer in the school store as long with, uh, as long with a list of things that people would like to see sold at one. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go, I have a pretty good friendship with the student body president, so I'm gonna communicate with her about like what both groups can do. And then next meeting, hopefully, I should have like a more well-rounded plan as to what Noble wants our school store to look like. Excellent. How'd you like it this past week during homecoming? Oh, I really, I yeah. thought homecoming was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. and the store was rocking. It was, yeah, yeah, it looked really good. I think it helps a little bit, it being like out there instead of in mm. there, because people yeah. are always walking by it. They're oh, yeah. always seeing you, that. Plus, there wasn't enough room with the sales they had going <laughs> on with the t-shirts <laughs> and stuff. They'd never have gotten that done in the same length of time. Um, so also this morning, I'm an officer for National Honor Study. I help with the Red Cross Blood Drive. And so I was just going to like share some of the things we went over. We're um, going to start this kind of rock the vote thing. It helps us register with student council and as well the um, student body president. I'm very good friends with her too. And we also have this big thing, our big thing for National Honor Society this year is we're trying to start a scholarship for a friend of ours who would have been graduating this year who was in a very bad car accident. Um, so we've collected $100 through our clink and we are going to put that into the scholarship to have like a baseline. And that's just something I wanted to share because that's like our big thing this year. 
that um, so the information that you have in there is it handwritten or is it ty uh, typed out? Right now know? we just have this handwritten. This is just could, a little thing. Could you scan that yeah, and send it definitely. to Sue Austin so that uh, we'll? Uh, yeah, I've taken that. some notes, of but course. it would be easier if we had your notes and uh, work with her to uh, make sure we get this down yeah, correctly. Perfect. Sounds good. Cool. And you said bottle drive and bake sale what did you oh no the um, money we have so far for this scholarship is just through a bottle drive we like um oh. take the clink bags and it's just through national honor society we all turn in a bag so we have like some money right now already saved up so we just wanted to put that in okay to start great thank you mm -hmm. i don't know where i got bake sale <laughs> <laughs> I, think you're you're hungry. Hungry. I guess i guess <laughs> Never turn down a big sale. That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, agenda item number six, electronic communication and presentation from Chris Russo. Mr. R. Please. <laughs> so, um, would you like some help? casting? Or uh, I don't know. I might, I might need a hand here. What do you think it's called? No, I, Library? Honestly, is our casting plugged in up here? It We're is. Good okay. to go. Um, so a couple of different topics I'd like to talk about with um, in regards to electronic communication. The first one that i have um, most excited about is that we, I've helped launch our administrative team into the land of social media. Uh, and Mr. Conley is on Twitter, on uh, fire, and he's on, on fire. fire. I, t I actually texted him today separately. I, I have a notification set up. Anytime he tweets something, I, get, I know right away because I got to keep an eye on him. Uh, so my phone's going off, going off, going off. I'm like, what is going on? It's Mr. Conley. He's like tweeting away. So I texted him. So I said, you're on fire today. This is awesome. Um, Just go to hashtag We Are Noble, and you can see what those are. <laughs> That's right. So. Um, we do have at least one administrator from each building who's on Twitter. And the, basically the idea is that uh, we want to share the good stuff that's going on in the schools on a day-to-day -day basis that you don't see from the outside perspective. Um, you know, in my travels going around, um, you just see some amazing things. And we just kind of challenge the administrative team, capture some of that good stuff, put it out there, let people see what's happening and feel positive about what's going on in schools. So uh, we did a little homework. We found, um, we did some research on hashtags and we found the hashtag we are noble uh, was not being used by anybody. So we've kind of, there was one company that was using it, but we kind of hijacked it uh, and we're just flooding it with um, information. So we're kind of all using that hashtag to kind of collectively organize the communication. Um, but each build building has their own Twitter handle. Um, so you can see, on the left hand column here, kind of this is today, three hours ago, four hours ago, we've got athletics updates. Uh, Mr. Watson does a wonderful job kind of publishing scores and stats and updates during the game. Um, Lebanon Elementary School was detailing. I was actually there when they were taking that picture. That's uh, Brian Horn in the background um, working with a student uh, today on the sensory path. And then we've got the Noble Middle School article that was in the DOE. Uh, update today about the morning greeting crew, which is awesome. Um, and then you see, this is earlier this morning, MSAD 60 souped uh, with, he was at lunch, and then he was in, I don't know where, you can tell people where you were at. Uh, but classrooms in PE. <laughs> classrooms in PE. Um, but the idea is, again, to push that positive mes message and get out there all the good stuff that's going on in schools. Uh, we also have embedded most of the Twitter feeds in the side of the school web pages. So, you know, Northbrook Elementary has their Twitter feed embedded. Um, I'm going to get Mr. Conley's up on the district page so that people can go there and see that information on the web page too, in case they're not on Twitter. Um, and the reason we to chose Twitter to kind of dip our toes in, uh, I went to a, a con national conference uh, last fall, and you know, the speaker there said, Grandparents are on Facebook, parents are on Twitter, kids are on Instagram. And I think that's probably even shifting now, now more up the chain. Um, but we're going to start with Twitter. It's pretty easy for the administrators to do from their phone. And then obviously you can tie those services together if we need to branch out and hit the other audiences. Um, so that's the, what's that? Where are you folks? <laughs> Instagram. 
mostly. Yeah, we use them. <laughs> Instagram. Instagram. My yep. wife, grandma, tweets. <laughs> yep. All right. No, she Facebook. I mean, you hit it. You right. hit it. <laughs> um, so that's that's number one, electronic communication. The other two um, are a little bit more serious. Uh, the first one is that we've switched from the Remind text messaging system that we were using last year, which was free. Um, we took advantage of that for four, four or five years. Um, they discontinued their free service to schools and wanted to charge us uh, top dollar. Uh, and that happened all after budget season. So um, we made a decision to switch to a new product called School Messenger, which is used by most schools in the state of Maine. Um, and School Messenger lets us do both voice calls and emails and we'll eventually have the text messaging capability as well, but that is an opt-in feature. Parents have the option to not receive text or to receive text. Um, so folks in the community, parents will likely be receiving messages on all three fronts just to make sure we cover our bases uh, for things like snow days or early emergency releases or late starts and those sorts of things. Um, so in the school messenger platform, Parents are automatically enrolled based uh, with their phone number and their email address based on the information we have in Infinite Campus. Um, and th there's a nightly synchronization that happens every night at 2 a.m. Um, all the Guardian contact information gets pushed. Um, we've had a small handful of people who say, hey, I'm, I'm not, I didn't get a call. Or, um, and most of that is having to do with just um, not perfectly accurate data entry. Um, you know, there's like little hiccups where they have to be designated a guardian and a primary or secondary contact to get to get the call. So we're working through those little things, um, but for the most part, um, our first couple of calls have gone seamlessly. Um, and then the last piece that we want to talk about is Crisis Go, which is our emergency notification system. Um, I'm going to switch over to my phone if that's okay and do a little demo. And oops, let's not do that. While I'm switching over here, um, Crisis Go does, oops, sorry, <laughs> I'm pinned in here. Uh, Crisis Go kind of covers three pieces of communication uh, in our crisis planning. Number one is it is a repository for our district-wide crisis plans. So it's a digital version of our crisis plan, and that crisis plan is kind of broken up into a series of role-based checklists. So if you're an administrator, you have certain responsibilities during different types of events. In a fire drill, you have the X, Y, and Z you need to do. Um, in a lockdown, you have to do a different set of things. And the same is true for teachers. Um, teachers have different roles in different emergencies. So it is a digital version of our crisis plan that teachers can have in their pocket on their phone or in their computer. It is instantly updated. So if we make a change to a crisis plan, and we click a button, it pushes out the latest change, and all the teacher's information is immediately updated. Um, so that's number one, is crisis plan kind of repository. Number two is an instant alerting feature. So um, we've been training with our administrators and training with our staff on the ability to, from their phone with a couple of clicks, instantly alert the entire staff and the administration and first responders that there's a crisis uh, occurring. So um, that's something that we haven't ha ever had the ability to do before. Um, so that's number two. And then number three is after a crisis or an alert has been triggered, it brings all of the first responders and staff and administrators into a messaging group, which is similar to a, like a large group text message, except um, there's some filters in place so that administrators and first responders can message directly to staff and staff can message directly back to them. Um, or the first responders can message the entire staff with instructions. Um, so this is, again, something that we didn't really have the capability to do with a traditional PA system and classroom telephones. Um, 
So those are the three pieces of the app. Um, and let me show you a little bit of it. And the question is, it sure. is it the, the messaging aspect, is that after the crisis or is it an instantaneous communication method when the crisis is, has occurred and is ongoing? It's, um, I think both. Okay. <laughs> um, as soon as an alert is triggered, teachers are presented with their checklist of things they need to do. Mm -hmm. Once they've completed their checklist or they clear it out of the way, then they're brought immediately into the messaging portion. Okay. Um, so I think that, yep. So um, here you can see my phone. Most of our administrators don't, I'm part of all the groups since I've set it up, um, but most of our administrators and safety teams only see their school. Um, and for them, it is very simple. They can click on the little red icon at the top left and they can choose their emergency. So I'm gonna choose uh, fire drill or explosion. Then they can choose alert, which is the actual real deal. Or for the purposes of drilling, they choose drill. And then they pick their building. They only have one. Um, but if I were to choose this building, which is our testing school. And Steve, I didn't pull you in in advance, so your phone's not going to go off. I apologize. <laughs> no, sorry. I saw you getting your phone out. I was like, uh-oh. Um, and I hit send instantly. All the people in that school, all of the staff there, their phones will go off with a tone that overrides their volume settings on their phone. So even if your phone is on silent, your, their phone is going to go off. Um, and it's going to go off until they acknowledge that something's going on. Um, and then they're brought to their role-based checklist. Um, when we choose drill, whoops, sorry, my phone went off. Uh, when we choose drill, the emergency responders are not notified, so we're not going to be bothering them every time we do a drill. Uh, but when it becomes the real deal, they will get that notification escalated to them. Um, oops, let's get connected back up here. A couple other pieces of the app that uh, are particularly important. Uh, the maps application. So all of our first responders will have access to building maps um, without having to go digging for them or looking through paper. And these are updated by us. So anybody coming in, looks like I, it's a little behind me. Look at that. Even the tech guy has problems with technology. Mm -hmm. um, the first responders will have the maps available to them. They can zoom in. Uh, I think one of the things we've talked about with the crisis teams is that you may have responders who have never seen this building or never been in the building, so that will be critical for them to have. Um, and then the application, yeah, question. On that piece? Yeah. Um, I'm working with the incident management team at York County Emergency Management, and their uh, goal is to try to, same thing Travis and, and some other of our locals have talked about, is why do places have different systems? Why was, would one school system have this, another school, or... or so we're working to try to get as many districts as possible on board with Crisis Go so that any responders, because if there's an incident in Sanford, guess who's going to be there? This guy right here, he's going to be there. So he's got to go, and does he need to know two or three different systems? Crisis Go is very easy. 57's looking into it. Sanford's looking into it. Uh, um, Marshwood? Marshwood? Using it using it, yep. and then there's another district that I'm just not thinking of. Oh, uh, Bonnie Eagle is using it right now. So uh, we're getting there. Okay. Oh, question about the app itself. Sure. You said that um, if you hit an actual event, not a drill. Mm -hmm. If I'm a teacher and I'm hitting that because of the incident is happening in my classroom, mm -hmm. you said that the alarm goes out to everyone. Does it also go out? on the phone and it bypasses the volume. Does it also go out on the phone of the person who initiated 
the N alert? No, it does not. Okay, yep. because if they're That's trying to be quiet. Yeah. Okay. That's All a right. good question. Um, there are also some other features that are in there. There's a panic feature, which allows um, teachers to notify just the safety team that there's an issue. Like if I use the example, if somebody's out on the playground and they don't have a radio and a kid gets stung by a bee that's maybe allergic and the teacher needs to quickly notify somebody, there's the panic tool, which we show them how to use. And that doesn't, doesn't call emergency services right away, but it notifies the safety team, which includes the school nurse, and it puts them in direct communication via um, chat <clears throat> with the safety team. It also relays their GPS location from their phone. So if they were like walking in the woods or something. Um, Have you worked it all with what three words? Say that again? Have you worked it all with what three words? That's what they hear. It's crap out of you. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's what goes off on, on their phone. Okay. What three words instead of GPS? Are you familiar with? The no. It's, um, I'm not quite sure what the company is based out of, but it's starting to gain traction. Every, um, the, the entire globe is broken down into very small chunks. Mm -hmm. It's like there are several chunks in this library, and three random words are assigned to a chunk, and you can get led directly to like that table over there, as wow. opposed to come into the library and wonder where is the problem. Hmm. Um, so it, it just hit the media recently. I just, I just googled you know it. What What's cool? Words go with what chunk. You have to, well, it's, it's, yeah. if you have the app on your phone, oh. um, it tells you what your location yes. is, what three words apply. And for example, um, hikers lost in the woods, if they have it on their phone, the responders can go right to the boulder they're on, wow. as opposed to searching the entire forest. That's neat. Yeah. And it's not dependent on satellites or anything. I don't think so. It's smart. No. Cool. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> when you said GPS, because that, that can sometimes be quite a big yeah. area to search still. Cool. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> the last piece that it has that I'll talk about today is um, it has a listing of all of the contacts in the district with their cell phone numbers. So you remember the phone trees from the days past, and you had to update the phone tree? Uh, those You don't need to do that anymore, because pretty much everyone has a cell phone and they've entered their cell phone number when they sign up for their account. Um, I can go in there, and if I need to, in a crisis, call Jamie back there. I don't have her phone number in my phone. We're friends, but we're not that good of friends. Uh, <laughs> I can go in the app and hit the phone button and call Jamie uh, right from the app, uh, which, is, which is super handy, because you, you don't know who you, you're going to need to talk to at what given moment. Uh, so that ties kind of pretty much everybody together uh, through cell phone use. So, multiple times you've mentioned first responders. Yep. Have we rolled it out to first responders? The We've only first responder that I actually have in my, uh, that's uploaded in mine right now is Steve Merrill, who's from the Lebanon. 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 Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a no. What's our game plan? Because the game plan was to do that last year. Or it's a no on mine. Yeah, the game plan was to do that last year, and we didn't. So, what's the I, game plan on that now? One of the challenges that I've had is trying to find, um, trying to coordinate with each department. Um, obviously, Berwick it should be pretty easy for us to do. Um, this morning, I was in Lebanon with a state trooper, um, and we got him tied in. Um, so, and we've they've kind of updated the way we can tie first responders in. They've made it a lot easier. Um, so I'm happy that I can send you those directions and I can come over and meet with you too. What are you um, doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow afternoon I'll be over. I'm on shift tomorrow. So. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. And that's uh, before October 11th when we have our first our uh, drill. So that'll be good. Next. Yeah. Is there utility in board members being on this or do we just wait for notification from the admin? I mean, we don't have a role to play, um, but... Yeah, so, so I think what happens is it, uh, it breaks things down into groupings. Like there's a point of information officer mm -hmm. that comes to a scene as an incident command center, the rolling one. There's um, people stationed at different things. It's not the board wouldn't have roles in those particular things. So and people wouldn't be seeking direct information from you to say, hey, what's happening at that school? So not as far as I can 
find a, a way that would make make it practical? Fields. One is the household phone number. So that's typically if someone ha if someone has a home phone, that will be there. <laughs> well, and we also map to the primary contact one and primary contact two's cell phone numbers. Um, what we see most often is that that household phone number is either mom or dad's or guardian's cell phone. Sure. Um, so we might it they might actually be entered in there three times, but if they're only going to get one call. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, Chris, these uh, so when I'm looking at a name, for instance, I just pulled up Jamie's name from her school. When I'm looking at a phone number here, it says cell phone. That's downloaded. What is that uploaded from? When Jamie signed up. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So, Jamie, just just to verify, Jamie, is your cell phone number? <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, no. we won't do that. No. Get ourselves in trouble. <laughs> All right. Number seven, we need to schedule a facility and finance meeting. Okay, so um, the uh, CHA firm, the architect slash engineer firm, is on board. Um, we have a, a level, like a, almost like a level one proposal, and... Uh, uh, that's uh, signed off, ready to go, and then there'll be a level two proposal that'll kick in later on in the process. Um, one of the situations that I've, a major situation I've talked to you about is that um, we had originally thought about going out to referendum in November of 20, yeah, November of 20, of, yeah, isn't that right? November 20. That's in another that's year. That's what we had originally okay. said, yeah. Yes, which would be on the, on the next budget. It would be on the 2021 school budget. And we knew that the uh, estimation for the cost for the A&E was going to be somewhere 250, three and a quarter, and it looks like $300,000. So um, that would be in the next budget. But the moving uh, to June of 2020 puts that on this year's budget. Well, we, we don't happen to have $300,000. We have it in a surplus in the fund balance, but as you recall, we cannot overspend what the taxpayers approve. So um, the, first, the first proposal, the first level is $50,000, and we're gonna have to tighten our belts to do that piece. The next part that we're looking at is how to do um, uh, BANs, what is that? Bond, not annuity, bond um. notes, <laughs> bond Something blank notes. notes. Yeah, I'm yeah. blanking on the word. Yeah. <laughs> hey, help me here, folks. <laughs> bond ambiguous so notes. I, I can't think of what the word is. Anyway, so, uh, uh, so, do, so to do a bond note, but banks, for instance, we do um, a good deal of our business with Gorham Savings Bank, and they don't have the, uh, the bond, not amortization, oh, I oh, almost had it, notes. Um, so we're, we're going to meet with another person who does do those and have a conversation there. Uh, so that'll get this whole thing started so that we can get the, um, first, first of all, for the facilities and finance subcommittee, we can get on to the conversation. October 15th, we have our first in-district discussion about the broad budget picture for the 2021 school year. <laughs> I mean, that's a, what's today, the third? Mm -hmm. 12 days we're going to start talking about 
a budget that's 18 or so months out. Um, so we've got that coming up, and then we've got the facilities piece. So um, assisting with the facilities and finance will be the work of the construction committee. Um, so so we'll, we'll work both of those pieces out. But the first piece is let's get a, I'd like to get a meeting date for the end of October, um, either, either the very end of October or the very start of November with the facilities and finance so we can get our, a look at what the big calendar is that we're going to need to, to meet for two things. One, the budget, and two, the uh, construction leading towards referendum. Okay. That one is Travis and May. I'm sorry, that's, that's what? That's for Travis and May. Are there three so people or two? Lynn, Lynn yeah, is on Lynn, the table. Right? Yeah, you had me there for a minute. So I was thinking Lynn was on this one. Okay. So. You're lucky because I'm going into weekend, so it opens up my weekdays a little early. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I have um, Monday the 28th or Tuesday the 29th open in the end of the month, or I have Monday the 4th and and then, no, yeah, Thursday the 7th, which is a board meeting. So we've got Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday the 1st, the first in, week in November, and then I've got Monday, Tuesday, the last week in October. Monday so, afternoon. Uh, you can tell me what works. The 29th would be uh, a possibility. What day was that? It's a Tuesday. The 29th yes. would be a possibility. Yeah. I can do that. Oh, this is not the construction committee. This no. is just the facilities the finance. Office. All right. Yeah. I think we all can do the 29th. What time would be good? Uh, that's a Tuesday. So uh, Tuesday the 29th, yeah. I can make any time available. I think that day. I, don't, I forgot my phone, so I have no clue what my schedule looks like on that day. So we'll ballpark it, We're see what works, it. and then we'll let you know. What what time works for the two of you folks? Late afternoon is better for me than. Like, morning. what's late afternoon? What would. Anytime after 3 yeah, 30. Yeah, I can do any time after 11 3 3 30. 3 30? Yeah. 3.30, to, we'll do a 3.30 to 4.30 schedule. Okay. Does that work for the administrators? That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. Yep. What day? So the 29th oh. at 3.30 at Central Office. Tuesday, the 29th of October, 3.30 to 4.30 at CO. Okay. Great. I appreciate that. And we'll look at scheduling some more from there. Any uh, <coughs> motion on the construction committee actually getting together? Um, I'll know a little bit more after I meet with uh, Alan Cunningham from CHA, which is next week. Okay. So then I'll I'll have the I'll have a a timeline from him that I can bring forward and say these are things that are coming from the architect firm, and I'll probably see uh, to look to schedule Alan to come in and meet with the. Uh, building committee okay. the construction committee all right thank you thank you okay uh number eight msba proposed resolutions all right so those i believe went out electronically but just in case to cover one two three four that way thank you and those that way so every year the MSBA has proposed resolutions. Um, the first resolution is staff use of social media. The second one is school board use of social media. The third one is legislative focus on students. And the fourth one is board teacher relations. Um, and then separately, MSAD 75 school board. 75. Uh, I can't think of who that is. Um, 
it talked about uh, career and technical education funding restoration. Thompson. Oh, Thompson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you had the opportunity to read those over, but uh, the what the so the delegate who is um, Denise Mallet will be asked to see, do you support moving these proposed resolutions forward in some form to the legislature? And so those uh, in written stances. So um, I guess I'd like to know for Denise tonight if the first one, staff use of social media, as you read that, is there anything in there that you might object to? Or do you support what you read? is not saying that staff can't utilize social media during the day, during the school hours, just need to do it appropriately, correct? Yes, that there should be that. very specific guidelines as to how social media is used between, um, from staff to students. To students, okay. Yes. Specifically towards students or in general? Because right now I don't get um, to students aspect. It, I mean, during the work day yeah, and point. outside good of work. Point. Very general. Yeah, yeah, all social media. All, that's a great, who's a great staff clarification. Member. So the Maine School Boards Association supports development of local board policy and guidelines around the appropriate use of social media by employees during the work day and outside of work and expectations and consequences for staff using social media to bully or disrupt the school learning environment. Interesting uh, topic to, to list in there. Schools need to be clear about who has authorization to create and monitor school-sponsored sites on Facebook and other platforms and are encouraged to do appropriate training for staff around good citizen, digital citizenship. So it sounds as if this would lead to potential guidelines for, for further policy work. And it is that kind of conduct outside of the bounds of school within our purview? Um, I mean, the if the legislature decides it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, and if it also, yeah. because I know we had some cases before, if it's a situation that is mo it, it started outside of school, but then the kids bring it into side of school with whatever's going on, then yeah. And this then, is staff, not and students. But still, you want staff to use it appropriately and right. not contact yeah. students inappropriately. We have a policy, GBEB, -E that talks about um, staff and student relationships uh, and what, what the guidelines are for that. And this kind of thing would support that particular policy. So, or further refine it. Um, so in general support, or are there objections? Because Denise has got to go and raise a hand or not raise a hand, we, raise we an issue. We, we have policies in place already, so. We do, and it's about, the, yeah, that's a great point. We have policies in place, but it's about what's gonna happen across the state of Maine. Right. But I just want to, I mean, everyone keeps saying students. I don't see the word student in this paragraph Did I say anywhere. that again? Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and comments here too about the okay. students bring, but it's not right. students. We're talking about yeah. staff. No, so it's in general. In general, it's staff use of social media. And what if it's staff on staff? You know, that would qualify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's specific to. It's not about what a person does outside of school on their own. That's not connected through school. But it's about staff using social media to bully or disrupt the school learning environment, which tells you that this must be an issue. Somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. <laughs> if it's just one place, we, we wouldn't be looking at this. We have not had examples of this. I guess I would like to see something like regarding <coughs> district 
issues or something. There's nothing, the way this reads now, it doesn't narrow social media use at all. Um, it can be read, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but it can be read that if you are an employee of the district, what you do on social media, not only during the workday, but outside of work as well. So on the weekends, in the evening, at midnight, yes. at 2 a.m. Workday, outside of work. controlled. Well, you better not yes. bully another member of the staff. Right, but that's what I'm saying yes. is, well, is. The school learning environment, which yeah. means that's the part that to me indicates students, the school learning environment. And then it also talks about uh, who, who, auth who oversees and monitors school sites on Facebook and other platforms and then providing appropriate training about good citizenship not just to students but to the adults in the schools. That part I'm totally on board with all of that. It's mm -hmm. just I would I would wish for clarification of this outside of work because that is so broadly stated it doesn't specify that this is school related communication or staff on staff problems. It could be somebody being an idiot on a Facebook page that has nothing to do with work. Right, it could be a political post. That right. Could, and it has nothing to do with school. But uh, I know people have lost jobs because of stuff they've done yeah. on social media after work. And, and we read about that every yeah, year in the yeah. paper. Every so year. I just wanted to be you know, clear or what we're actually going news. for with this. because. So I can um, give, I can share with uh, Denise the idea of the clarification about outside of work being yeah. a little bit clearer on this component. And then um, if that were given, if that were done, so she, that she could share a thought on that, uh, would you folks uh, wish her to support that as a resolution from the, as part of the, falling under the umbrella of the Maine School Board Association, or would you prefer it not? Can we get a vote? Just a straw poll vote? Please. Those yeah. in favor? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, thank you. Um, second issue, school board use of social media. In recognition that many school board members use social media to, to communicate, the Maine School Boards Association would like to affirm the same standards apply to social media as other more traditional means of communicating. Those standards, bless you, include making clear you are speaking as an individual and not on behalf of the full board, which is in uh, our um, A policies in, in any case, directing concerns or complaints about the district to the administration in our A policies, conducting yourself online in a manner that reflects well on the district, using caution about <coughs> inadvertently revealing confidential information, well, that, that's under FERPA, uh, avoiding altogether the uh, conversations about contract disputes, that's always a good idea, investigating or any other matters where the board must be impartial in its deliberations and remembering that if a quorum of the board is discussing school business on social media or via, via email, it constitutes a meeting. Can I ask a question? Do you yes. know how we have those at budget time? Places where we can go in and ask questions and talk about different stuff. Does that count? I mean, it's really... I can't remember what we used. It's discussing Workshop. school business. When we were using the Google Docs, you mean? Well, I don't know. Is that what it was? Yeah. Like one of the Google so that wasn't yeah. public. Okay. It was more of a... Well, it was just it, you're, when you're, you're discussing you're, it, something via email constitutes a meeting. So usually what that is is people saying, this is what we want you to bring to that next meeting. So, yeah. and, we, and we air whatever that thing was right. at the next meeting. Yeah. So we're not, uh, we're not missing a step. It's Correct. not like there's some it's just bringing back communication. I'm pretty sure what they're referring to is back, back channel communication that the public does not become privy to. And our public becomes privy okay. to the information in that document okay. because it's brought up at the facilities and finance subcommittee meetings, which is open. Um, and agendas, are, uh, brief agenda items are posted. People can join that as well. And then the same thing with the, the board meetings. When we go to the next board meetings, it's made the information that we've discussed that anyone has commented on there is brought up for the board to discuss. Okay, show of hands, straw poll for support. All those in favor? Okay. Legislative focus on students. The main, what? Why do they want to focus on students? The Maine School Boards Association would like to stipulate that legislators and our own legislative review committee view every legislative proposal affecting public 
education through the lens of whether or not it is in the best interest of students we serve. The impact on children should be spelled out in both the language of the proposed law and in the testimony we present. If the legislation does not have the student's best interests as its focus, it should be redrafted or rejected. This proposal should be in the form of a resolve voted on in the second session of the 129th legislature. So in order to get there, it would have to be considered emergency legislation and be um, uh, approved by the governor to be added to the 129th second session. And what this is, I believe that this is really getting at is that you're aware there were 280 bills put before the Labor Committee, the Education and Appropriations Committee, and one other vehicle that um, came into play in one legislative session, unprecedented. And that 79 of those passed, we're still, it's called, even by Drummond Woodson standards, they're saying when I go to presentations, the title of the presentation is called the, the dam breaks. Mm -hmm. So look at all these changes and you've got to implement these now. Most of them kicked in September 19th. Um, so I think what this is saying is that there were a number of those bills put forward that never once mentioned anything to do with students in it. What is the impact to students? How does this benefit uh, the education in the classroom? All right. Questions, comments? Straw poll support for this? All those in favor? And I'll be writing a, a testimony for that one and presenting that in January. If, if, if I believe it'll go through to the governor's desk. Board teacher relations. The Maine School Boards Association is committed to providing training and support to its members on ways to validate and improve the meet and consult process when adopting or amending education policy. So what you might be aware of is that there was a bill to change education policy to a negotiable uh, right. And so what this is to me is a halfway bridge between that to say that, uh, here's an example, uh, the, the calendar, we do meet and consults with the association, uh, all the associations. Uh, I meet with them, I show them a draft of this, I consult with them about what do you see in days, how are we doing, does this meet what are the obligations of the contract and so forth. That's a very simple example. The goal is to improve communication around key policies that most directly affect teachers and review and collaborate with staff on policies that need updating. In concert with that effort, MSBA would like to encourage and help train boards in interest-based bargaining to further support collaborative relationships between school boards and our teaching staff by welcoming their input. And we also believe boards should create more avenues to provide teacher's voice. So when I talk, for instance, with our um, legal counsel about interest-based bargaining, they kind of see that as the village where things went wrong. Just, I'm just going to be straight with you. So, this got in here and this then it gets in over here and it gets in over here and it was all interest-based and it sounded really good but look what it's done to the overall contract so uh our, our legal counsels don't typically support that that particular piece the interest-based i think this gets into a couple of different things it's talking about the meet and consult process and then it's talking about interest-based bargaining so i'm kind of wondering why this particular one gets into two different issues at the same time, um, but that's, that's what we have for a proposal. Um, we typically, we have a, a, Jamie, I think this is a fair thing to say, we have excellent relationships going with our, our teachers association, with the uh, administra administrative association, the AFL-CIO, and with our support staff association. We ju I just had a meeting this morning with support staff and Rick and I did, no one was bloodied, no, no cuts, no nothing. So we have, we have very good uh, working relationships right now. Uh, and we intend to keep it that way. And our goal is that we um, consistently seek to meet and have open channels of communication uh, not just around topics that are mandatory meet and consults, but in general, when we th see things that we think 
a uh, simple example, the use of, uh, Jamie, what's the thing, uh, PLCs, uh, professional learning community times, when those occur, what the other, what uh, teacher prep time should look like, so we don't wait for issues to arise with that. We try to get ahead of them. And Jamie's been taking the lead on that piece around the PLCs with the elementary schools and trying to balance out schedules and four different schools to make sure that everything's fair and above board uh, for all considered. Um, so so we're, I think we're in good shape with this particular topic. And we're going into a negotiation year, so. But it sounds like you're recommending that it actually gets split into two different. Well, I, I just think, um, <clears throat> I know that the topic of interest-based bargaining, when I discuss that matter with the specific uh, attorney that, that Joanne is aware, that, that and Nancy is aware, that we've used. I don't know, Travis, were you on a bargaining group that? Okay, so the two of you have served on that bargaining team with legal counsel. I think Denise did. Denise Mallet? I think so. She think might have. She did. She the, might have. Um, oh, she did uh, one of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, they wouldn't be particularly in favor of that piece, but I'm sure they'll create their own lobbying um, about that. And this is talking about encouraging and help train boards and what that looks like. So I wonder who would be doing the training. So it's kind of a, a mixed one for me. I'm, I'm on two sides with it, personally. Any thoughts from the board as to what Denise would like Denise to do with this vote? I think the, the conference is an excellent opportunity for board members to go and get training there for this sort of thing. Um, and for us, like I agree with Steve, and I think we've always wanted teachers to feel that there was a, you know, we were always open to their thoughts and comments, and you know, we're we're here for them, and we want to make sure mm -hmm. that we are doing what they need. Um, we're supporting them the way they need us to support them. But I I don't think this is an, something that's necessary for us. I think this is something we do really well. Yeah, but not all schools may do it this well. No, but and, I don't want them telling us how we need to do it. You know what I mean? I don't want them to make a rule that says that we have to change the way we do things because I think we've got a good system going. But it's not very specific on how it's going to do it. Mm. So I mean, I mean, and and that it's kind of general. Have you found, Steve, in your, your superintendent's meetings, do a lot of districts have a difficult time with this? So uh, the meet and consult never comes up. Oh, okay. People don't talk about that piece because it's this, you could pretty much look at a list and say, these are the things I'm required to meet and consult about, or the kind of topic I'm required to meet and consult about. So that never really gets brought up. The interest-based bargaining gets brought up. There are one or two superintendents in York County that um, like that approach, and then there are the majority of people who have expressed that they uh, that they think that that has. Um, Something, here's kind of what happens. Something gets in, let's say, we'll just take Marshwood next door. Something gets into a Marshwood contract that later on people say, well, you know, look, this is in Marshwood and it's not here or it's not there and we're neighboring districts, so it puts a little bit more pressure on another district to be considering that same piece in the totality, totality of the negotiations. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a really, um, The topic is somewhat divisive. Some, some would say they've had good experiences with it. Others would say not. I, I could, I've talked with people within this district that um, from years ago when there was interest-based bargaining that thought it was a really good thing and that it, it, it did good things. And then I've talked with Campbell Badger, 
who would say that's one of those darn things that came in during that time when the district was doing this and that's not the way that should have been written and once you get it in you'll never get it out kind of and so I just go okay I wasn't here then I don't <laughs> I all right so I think that's just a that's a tough part I wouldn't uh, I see the word encourage yeah in there yeah. And, exactly. and I, I'm fine with the word encourage. I'm, I'm not fine with mandates. And so, I, and I get the point. It says, it says right below it in the rationale, the school board board's legal right and responsibility to adopt education policy was challenged this year in the legislature by a bill that would have made adoption of policy negotiable. The bill, we have like 300, the size of that book right there, right? Um, uh, all of those things negotiable. So. Um, the bill passed and ultimately was vetoed by the governor. The vote, that vote should serve notice that more needs to be done to engage teachers in the meet and consult process around education policy. It also underscores the importance of opening up better lines of communication between administrators and all teaching staff. The, I think the issue that I would run into with that if that, be, if that was not vetoed by the governor is that uh, sometimes the association gets put in a tough place because an individual in a school sees something as this is I don't like this schedule that I've gotten here and this is not going to work for me and it's um, it's putting our team in a difficult spot some other people on the team may not feel that but the association then needs to say hey we got to have a conversation we should think about working this out um, the same thing could be true with uh, uh, someone having a like a, requesting a voluntary transfer or an inv or or being involuntarily transferred that those kinds of things all of a sudden become negotiated items so how do you where is it I just look at this and say where does this time in the world come from to negotiate all these different things when we have to notify people by the end of the previous school year in June, June 30th that this is what a schedule looks like, these are who are teaching these classes in these buildings where they're working and then you have, if you had six or seven challenges to that over a summer that have to be resolved prior to the start of a school year and the association may say well you know we they might not tell us, but they may say amongst themselves, we support one or two of these, but two or three of these we don't really support, but we have, that's part of our role. We have to go out and, and uh, see to the needs of the members. So I think it puts them in an awkward spot at times. So this is really just saying um, they, they want um, the main school board association is committed to provide providing training and support. So that's all they're doing. Is they're saying that they want to provide more training and support. Yeah, so it's trying to it's trying to bridge it and say, well, if there were enough votes in the House and the governor, but the governor vetoed it and and, and so let's, you know, so that means we should be if I was in the DOE or the MSBA, I would be saying we've got to have better lines of communication there. I don't worry about them in our district currently um, but you know things change so it's a tough one it, it, this one isn't so so that's interesting so so saying that, that like education policy could be has to be negotiated would never be the same thing as that's improving lines of communication To me, that's filling up the pipeline of communication until <laughs> it's jammed and clogged to a drip on the other end. Um, but I, I'm sure I would see that if I was talking with Judy Beveridge, who's the Uniserve rep in the, in, uh, for our area, she, she would have a different view on that. So you know, it's depending on what your role is and the view that you're going to have. I like parts of it, but I don't know. Like which parts? I like the last last sentence. <laughs> um, Create more avenues to provide teachers' voice. Yeah. Well, 
And Rebecca, what were you just saying? I just see it, it's, it sounds, some parts of it sound good on the surface, but I don't see how the association voting on this is going to just be more than just lip service because I don't really think this is doable. It's like if your individual district isn't mm -hmm. behind it and willing to do it, right. it's, you can't make people do it. You know, it's... I think it kind of conflicts with the previous one, which was legislative focus on students. How do I match up a, that with some of the things that would come up in interest-based bargaining, for instance, or in um, the meet and consult? process. It's, those things are not about students, but it says that we, we want to promote legislation that focuses on these things. So it's kind of like, can you, can you do both of those at the same but time? But I just, there must have been more than one school that has had issues with this for this to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't yeah. just with one school make a whole resolution on it. So yeah. there's got to be, I, I don't know how many, some. Yeah. Several, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not schools hearing... that are having that are that are having trouble with it, and I mean, yeah. we might not be having trouble with it now here, but in five or ten years from now, how do we know? And then, it, it's it could be a regional thing. I have no idea. Yeah. I I know that it's not these. This is not part of our conversation about superintendents sitting together in York County saying. Right. Uh, we'd, we'd like to ha workshop this topic. This is difficult for us. Let's bring in legal counsel, share the cost, mm -hmm. and so forth. We're not having those issues. So well, maybe it's, it's up not north. In, I don't know. It's, it's not in District 9. <laughs> so. But it, it, I can't imagine they would have made, the, you know, put it, put it on this paper if or it was region, just region a couple. Nine, excuse me. Right. Yeah. So there's some school districts somewhere that they have issues, that or the teachers have issues with a lot of education policy, I guess. Um, I think also that was a push at the national level, the, the NEA. Oh. So I think it was not I mean, just it's not really saying me. you have to do X, Y, and Z. It says training and support. Yep. And it says encouraging that. So what would you like Denise to say or do with this? How much are these discussed at the meeting? I mean, we, we've had a discussion around this table about this, but what is she likely to hear and that we might not be privy to? So that would be a great question for a person who has sat at that table before. It depends. <laughs> it, it truly depends on, you know, if there's anyone there that has a bee in the bonnet about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes no one says anything and they just And pass sometimes everything. it goes on for hours yeah, on this just this one thing. Of, yeah. Who has an interest in that particular one? Maybe the the, um, the district that was behind it mm. will get up there and try to rally support. But mm -hmm. yep. it's usually a pretty quick. When when I attended as a delegate, it was pretty straightforward. They just read them and we voted yay or nay, and that was that. I'd be very interested to see which yeah districts which, uh, uh, are. Yep. Where the from? Is it is it something that is a regional thing? I really I haven't heard anything. There's nothing in the MSMA newsletters, Maine School Management Association newsletters, that are discussing this topic. So I I don't have a feel for it. But I just remember from last year, and I don't even remember what which what it, the issue was. I mean, they were lined up oh. to get to the mic okay. to make their comments. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I think you never we know. Need more information to look at mind about it. Maybe Denise will get more information yeah. at the meeting. But she has to vote at the meeting. Yeah. Did she abstain? I think further information. Yeah. But then and let her make her best judgment yeah. when she's yeah. there and she I, hears I, it. I, yeah. I think you yeah. have to respect what she yeah. has to bring to the table. Give her the opportunity to uh, make a call while she's there. Right. So, uh, so th does that sound fair? Yeah. Sounds yeah. fair. I got the big D right there. Do we there. have enough notes on the discussion to, to give her a sense of what? Yeah, and I can chat with her okay. in advance, too. 
Um, so because I'll be up there. I don't have all the notes, like, right. for everybody else in the yeah. world to see, but I, I've been taking And notes I'll be up there yeah, at the exactly. thing. So uh, the last one is um, career and technical education funding restoration. The resolution calls for the state to restore CTE funding to the fiscal year 2019 levels for all CTE regions. And it's talking about um, equitable funding increases will help assure, uh, ensure access and equity for all Maine students. So I don't recall exactly what the specific <coughs> financial change was in the CTE. Um, we have 106 students, and I think our cost is somewhere around, well, our, our per student total comes out to be with the equipment inventory. I, I'm gonna have to check that. I, I, don't, I don't dare hazard a guess right now. Um, but the funding from the state in the ED 279 was probably a 20%, 15% eh, drop in, in CTE funding for this from the, the legislative session for the 18-19 school year to what it is at this time. And I thought that was in response to like a reduction of of the numbers of students entering the CTE. I didn't think it was a per seat reduction. Like, we're gonna take off an extra 15% on every student. The biggest issue that we have in the CTE right now is by, is the large equipment purchases for the, the, the kitchens, uh, the EMS equipment, the, um, uh, what was one of the, oh, the, uh, the automotive uh, components, try to buy a tire balancer or something like that. I mean, those are huge price tags. Um, plus we had uh, CNC machinery that we've got invested in. SRTC has a very good equipment list and very good um, cycle on that, and all of the participating districts pay into that. Um, so there's eight schools that share the cost of the equipment. We, we're in great shape with ours because the school was just rebuilt in Sanford. Um, but we still are paying more this year for our career and technical education than we paid a year ago. Any thoughts? I'd like, like to expand it. Yeah. I'd like to expand like let's put a plumbing program Absolutely. in. They're, they're prepared to do that at SRTC, but they can't find students to enroll in it. That's because they don't market it right. If kids, believe me, my husband was a plumber. If they had any idea what a wonderful profession that is, yeah, they, you know, you use your head, you, you, you're using math every day. It's, it's like an, a, a puzzle trying to figure out how to do everything properly. You, you got to be pretty smart to be a plumber. So, you know, kids, they've got to realize you will make a very good living and you will always have a job. An electri always. electrical, electrician. being a master electrician, yep. the same thing. You're, you're going to be in paid internships in either one but of I those. Think, I think that's what they programs. have to do, though. They have to market it and they explain do. to the kids it's not just, you know, clearing a toilet. I mean, you really, it's... Well, and I think, too, we push college, 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 college. Oh, man. We need kids and in the trades. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, you, you can go to uh, YCCC or, S, uh, or um, um, the one in... SM, SMCC? The one that used to be down the street from me. Yeah, SMCC. I couldn't think of the name of it. Um, you, you can go to one of those schools and you can earn accreditation towards your master um, level certification. So you can, we can push college, we can push community college for that, or we can push the idea of what's the, the, the best financial way to get students into that and to do it in the most, in the most efficient, fastest way, which would be saying, let's, let's work on apprenticeships around the state yeah. to promote those. 
we know that the cost of the of the building works that we're doing for our three towns is significantly higher than it would have been just seven eight years ago um, and the biggest driver behind that is the tradespeople you can't mm -hmm. get people to do those jobs Masons. part of it is right now with the economy yeah. why should i lock myself into planning this over here for this thing when on any given day right now monday through friday i can go out and get all the work i want so that's because there's not enough people doing it so yeah. why lock yourself in but um well, i'm for this one i mean yeah. show of hands would you like denise to support this yeah. joy can you show you for this <laughs> you know what? I, I, you're right. Kids, right. they really need to know. You, they'll get out of school and they will have a gigantic debt for student, student loans, loans and yep. they will be making money, real good money yep. right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But you got to, you know, it's it's not, you got to get your journeyman and you, gotta, you have to get your master's license. But they paid internships. So yeah. It's a doable thing. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I used to lo love the idea of student teaching. You pay the school so you can go out. And yeah, work. no kidding. Can you see what's that? All right. That was the last one, right? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, we are on to the policy readings. So the only one that we had for today we've got several we've got jich up uh, the dash r the jick and the jje that we'll bring back in the october meeting i just needed more time with those policies um that, that, that could have come forward for second reading but i really needed more information um the one that we talked about uh streeter and joanne was the kf community use of school facilities that was tabled originally and brought back which turned out to be a really nice thing because if you notice on there, the piece in, in your electronic copies, the piece that we added in about the, if we had just said, not just cigarettes, but e-cigarettes, uh, tobacco products, e-cigarettes and marijuana, we would have been in violation of, we would have been creating a, a, a no-go between policy, what was it, JLCDA or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, it's listed right here as the medical marijuana in school policy. And the other thing that we figured out about this is it says in our handbook we have a JLCDA, but we went back and found that it, it did not go to a, it never went to a second read because at the time, the law firms were trying to figure out, should this be a policy that gets included into your current administration of medications in schools policy, or should it be a standalone policy? So it kind of got set off to the side. So right now, the draft that we have, uh, KF for community use of school facilities, says a couple of things. One, it says, there's an exception, JLCDA, so that is getting a little bit ahead of the game because we will be implementing, we have to implement a JLCDA, and we can do that in uh, this month. The other thing is that we added in the piece about the tobacco, uh, the, uh, excuse me, e-cigarettes, and up top, can you go to, yeah, thanks. Uh, preference to, let's see, acceptance of approval, no, that wasn't it, where was, wasn't there something in there about annually? Oh, yeah. Um, the fee schedule. The, we didn't get fee that. schedule approved annually. Is that what you're yeah. talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah. Fee schedule Mine's approved. Mine's right well, in yellow. Is it yours? Annually. Yeah, but this yeah. isn't the updated one from what we, we talked about. This isn't? It's no. not? No. Oh. I sent the, I sent the policy. Oh, wait. You sent a separate one. Yes, I sent it out you sent myself. You a separate one. Oh, geez, Steve. There was one attached to the agenda meetings. Huh? That's not the right one. Okay. Oh, yeah. shoot. Attached to what? She, there's a separate email. The one that says uh, Brenda and, and yeah. Aaron and so forth? Oh, hold on, where is no. it? The one yeah. I sent was... Oh, KF invitation to edit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the okay. one, And that's the one that has Brenda and Aaron. Okay, right. Attached notes to it. Say that again? It's 
this. Yeah, this is how it gets ready to be approved. Just, just one second. Wait a second. I haven't got um, any. It's, it's Did yours come me. with that highlighted? Yeah. Oh, application? No? Yes, that's the right one. Yes, yeah, see. That's okay. The right one. All right. All right. What does that say, Travis, right there in that yellow? What's highlighted right there? Preference, Preference to local not-for-profit organizations and ex the acceptance of appropriately res uh, and, appropriate responsibility and liability. And is that a comment? Is there a comment to the right from Brenda? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that is not the one that we were dealing with. The one that was from me was... This is from your email. Is, it, is this the one that's attached that to the is board? Email? That's the one from your email. <coughs> the one from your email has the comments on the side. Yeah. Oh, interesting. All right. Yes, because I see Aaron's too. So the one that's so attached which to the one minutes is, the is second, not the correct which is, one? Which one are we? This, this is the, the one with the notes at the side is the correct one. So okay. The one that Steve sent out is the correct one? Is but that what you're saying? I don't, see I don't know. That's my question. All right. See so I will uh, straighten this out and bring it back on, okay. on okay, the thank you. 19th. My, my, or what's the date? Uh, the uh, uh, 17th. 17th. My apologies. And also um, attach the... The facilities use form to that too, right? We yes, we did because we broke it out separately. So it's it's in the Google Doc and it's it's not that one. So I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll bring it back. All right. So we'll table that. So I put Do we a need big, to vote to table it or so no? So no. I was going to no. say no. I'll held a reading, but I just put a big more information. Ah, <laughs> next to it. All right. First reading. Okay, so JLCDA, I, I just talked about that, the medical marijuana and school policy. AC, non-discrimination, equal opportunity and affirmative action will be brought up to the subcommittee. ACAA is harassment and sexual harassment of students. ACAB is harassment and sexual harassment of school employees. And ACAD is hazing. Those 4A policies, uh, which we've all reviewed, they, they're updated. They're like in the 13s and 14s for 2013-2014 for us. Um, these were recommended policies to bring back because of legislation that occurred in the, in the first session of the 129th. So there's some minor changes that we need to make to those policies so they're updated. Okay. Uh, can we set a meeting time now or do that later? I would love to. I mean. um, so if I had like, if I could uh, get a meeting time with you for maybe the ninth, if there was any available time. I'm wide open. That would give me a chance on the five, six, seven, eight stretch to go through and make those changes and get that out to you as soon as I can. So that's Wednesday? Yeah. October 9th. Yeah. yeah. The other one would be, no, um, sorry. what's that? Sorry. Uh, I, I could also do. <laughs> I could also do the. Well, I could do the tenth. Tenth is crazy for me. Tenth is bad. Tenth is bad. Okay, ninth the ninth. What when did you guys schedule for the facilities and fines? Twenty ninth. I'm sorry. No. Twenty ninth. Yeah, yeah, Got it. Okay. Twenty ninth. Three thirty to four thirty. And three thirty as usual. Is that good? It works for me. Yeah, it's that? good for me. Too. Great. Thank you. Okay. So that is the. Okay. okay. Perfect. My goal is to get you that. Um, let me just finish putting this in. So that's October 9th, and we said uh, 3.30 to 4.30, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my goal would be to get you the electronic copies on the 7th. Okay. It's a tight turnaround, but <laughs> that's the goal. 
All right, number 11, employment, new hires, retirement, resignation. I have a uh, resignation. We hired a, a math teacher at the start of the year, Mr. Dunbar, and on the 25th, he sent Mr. Finley a note noting, he said, please accept his resignation effective immediately. Um, so he has gone on to other ventures. Okay. Do we need to vote to accept? Yes. All right. Um, do I hear a motion? Or do I just, we just hold the vote on that? A motion. Yes. Motion, all right. I need a motion. vote. Motion. A motion that we accept the resignation. A second? second. Okay. All in favor? Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, what is that? Seven now? Mm -hmm. We have seven. All right. Thank you. Number 12, other. Um, so the Noble Middle School sent us a letter. Uh, this is the students' and civil rights team. It says, to whom it may concern, that is you. <laughs> On April 26, 2019, Governor Janet Mills signed a law to change the name of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day in Maine. This October 14th, we will officially celebrate I'm just going to say IDP, IPD, excuse me, on a statewide level for the first time. The Noble Middle School Civil Rights Team respectfully asks that our school calendar, school district calendar, be changed to reflect the new holiday's name. We plan to address our school about being inclusive and respectful of Maine's tribal communities. We are enclosing the following article from the governor, from the office of Governor Janet Mills for further information. Thank you, and it's signed by the uh, students from the middle school civil rights team in the article that they included um, uh, with that. So uh, this request is uh, completely at your discretion uh, because it does not have to be resubmitted to the state of Maine. We, have, we are not changing anything in the schedule. We're changing a title. So. Um, you can act on it and we can fix it or we can you can put it off till next year whatever is in your any brothers. discussion on this do i have a motion i move that we correct it indigenous people's day we have a second second all, right, all in favor one two three three Yep. Opposed? One, two, three, four. Okay, three, four, oh. So we'll let them know that it will be uh, displayed in next year's calendar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Any other others? All right. Public input number two. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Oh so make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Linda got that one? She did. Nancy. I Nancy. All in favor. Nice. nice Good night. Enough. And Nancy. Okay.